Hey, David. Beer and brats or something like that. So again, just an update for everybody. We're trying to get the Zoom room started here uh, in the council chambers, but um, for right now, we still have a couple minutes before the meeting started. We're trying to get that going.
Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? I can finally hear you. Wonderful. Oh, you went back on mute. Joan, can you hear us? Oh, yes, I, I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. I never got my... Uh, action clapboard. So I, I hereby call this meeting of the Clear Lake Marketing Committee to order. Um, City Clerk, could you please do a roll call? Sure, sorry, one second. Yeah, take your time, sorry. I just, I have to log into our union code. No, you're good, you're good. I hereby Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Uh, so, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Okay. Member Overton. Joyce, are you there? If you are on mute. I see she's on the Zoom, but perhaps she cannot unmute it. Hmm. Okay. Maybe. All right. Chamber Representative, Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce, Joan Mingori? Yes. All right. Member Susan Bloomquist? I'm here. Vice Chair Stephanie Codling? Here. And Chair Clappy? Here. All right. Um, I don't see anyone, but we'll go to public comment uh, during. This marketing committee meeting, public comment will be accepted via email and via Zoom. If you'd like to comment remotely, uh, you can follow the procedures on the agenda. Um, Madam Clerk, are, have you received any public comment? I have not received any public comment via email, and it does not look like there are any, um, anyone, there's no one in the Zoom room who wishes to speak. Thank you so much. All right, moving on to business item one. We're going to talk about uh, content projects. Can, can you allow me to share my screen? Yes. All right, Joan and Susan, can you see my screen? I can. Wonderful. So uh, we're just going to barrel through this. Uh, the Indus and March project, that is something uh, involving Supervisor Sabatier. No update there. One team, one dream, just uh, for awareness. The deadline for applications, I believe, is June 30th. So please use your channels and, and, and let folks know that they are accepting applications. I know I've recommended a few folks sign up. Um, the downtown Clear Lake refresh, that should be complete. Um, I did that before last meeting, so I'll update that. Um, and then the photo contests I have here, um, why don't we, do you want to dive into that now, or do you want to talk about that during events? Either way. 
why don't, why don't you kick us off? Because that's one of my <laughs> things I wanted to chat about. All right. Uh, so the photo contest opened um, this last week. And we have a dedicated email address for folks to send the um, submissions to. And we also have a dedicated um, page on our website with um, a submission, which you can do directly through the website. Awesome. We have had some entries, so. Already, nice. Yeah. Um, excellent. Any, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so that open, it'll close September 15th or the 12th. Let me look on my website real quick. So it'll end the second week of September so that we have enough time to put the photos together to um, put together for our State of the City, which at the State of the City will announce the winners um, and have the pictures ready for display. Love it. Any support? It seems like you're moving pretty well, aside from letting yeah. folks know. Um, I think the time for support will come when it closes. Okay. So that we are sure that we have everything ready to go for State of the City. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I looked at the, the first couple of things that look great. Um, and not the photos, but the, what you guys put together. So it looks great. Awesome. Um, any comments or questions from the committee? Nope. nope. Wonderful. Um, so then the only other thing in the content area um, that we can bring up, I think, is vendor list. Uh, Stephanie, I know that that's something you've been working on. I don't know if you made they, any and changes. And they did send it to me electronically. I just have not. I mean, it's a gazillion pages long, as you can imagine. Well, so, I mean, you did just write an entire kite book, so I expect. No, no, I, well, I, <laughs> oh. I expect big things. Didn't I print it out for you? The last meeting or the meeting before? <clears throat> yeah, you did. I thought I did, yep. yeah. Which is fine. I think the next step for that is we want this to be a resource for all our event organizers. I wouldn't have it in here. But it doesn't sound like we have any actions at the moment for it. I just wanted to. Check yeah, in. no. And I think that we need to discuss whether we really want at, at the kite. I, I, it seems almost like at the kite festival, it, it should be kind of like the derby, a fun thing that we don't have vendors to sell stuff at. The derby we have, we actually have, I'll get to it, but yeah, it's a major thing. Yeah. Vendors. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to, well, I think when we think of events now, we yeah. want them to be revenue positive, if possible. Right, right. right. And not that the soapbox derby, we're, we're trying to get vendors to, to be revenue positive for that. Yeah. But as we're considering this kite festival, you know, it's not all the vendors, but maybe there's select vendors that make sense for that. Um, right. And like maybe a kite vendor. Kite vendor is one, you know, some food potentially. Yeah, um, yeah. But we, we can talk about that. Okay. Um, you know, or at the very least, my thought is food. If we're having kites, maybe we don't need other vendors, but especially food, let's promote these food trucks and food, mm -hmm. legitimate food vendors. Yeah, yeah. I, I think once once you get the foundation formulated a bit more, yeah. then we can start talking through mm -hmm. those pieces, like who do we want participating? Mm -hmm. Um, are we going to solicit sponsorships? Um, how are we, you know, is there going to be a contest or an event? Um, which we'll talk about it mm -hmm. when we get to the event part, mm -hmm. but um, I, I see that as kind of phase two. When, once you kind of, you have exactly what you want to do with it, then we can start filling in the gaps. Okay, um, so the other things on here, we, we kind of have a packed uh, schedule, so I, I, I don't think we need to dive into all of these, uh, the distribution lists and all that. Um, before we move on to events, does beautification and events, does anyone have any items that they want to add to the content portion? Um, I will just, I noticed here you've got chamber welcome packets from Chelsea. Um, I have not put our, I'm calling it the newcomer package. Um, I actually have started a list of things 
for potential newcomers. Um, it's going to take me a little while to um, get it where it's actually a package. But um, we've already, or I've already started putting together a, um, like a welcome wagon um, form uh, where they can contact, you know, the fire, the police, um, all the other stuff. Um, it's going to take a little while longer. So I just to let you know, I am working on it, but it's, um, uh, it's probably a couple of months out before it's actually something that we can um, get to where we're handing out, um, you know, like baskets to people or, you know, like was done many years ago. Um, but at least now I have items to hand people with phone numbers and addresses uh, for them to contact. So um, that was the only thing I noticed on here is you had that welcome wagon and it's, it's a welcome uh, newcomer package and it's a little ways off, but we're working on it. Okay, excellent. I'll move that up as uh, an actionable item uh, on this sheet here so we can chat about it. And if you need any support, name on it, please. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, uh, let's move on to item number two discussion of beautification projects. Um, first, and, and Bruno's not here, but I think we've all seen uh, the result of, of some of his work with the first fish statue going up. Uh, does the city know the schedule for the next group of fish or the next fish? Yeah, it's what, a couple of weeks out, right? You know? I think so. I haven't been too involved in it. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I can't confirm it then. Okay, no. Maybe, like Joyce, it's a maybe right now. <laughs> and I, I do know that, and you probably know this as well, that the, uh, the fitness equipment is, oh, yep. is here and going in and a rotary. It's going to be 100 approved. degrees this weekend. Is it I, this weekend or next weekend? I want to say it's this weekend. <laughs> uh, I, of course, am not part of the, that crew. Uh, <laughs> we'll get you lifted. Um, I actually have a question, and maybe you guys know it, or it's a question for Ellen. The area around the fish, is there going to be any landscaping done there? Um, I believe so. Okay. I can't see us leaving that as dirt, okay. but I cannot confirm that at this time, but I can look into it. Yeah, let me know. I because... want to say that there was supposed to be like some landscaping. Was just... There was. It, it, you're correct. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be not left as dirt because if you put some sort of landscaping around it, maybe plants or whatever they decided, it could detour people from yeah. trying to mess with the, yeah. yeah. I'll find mm. out about the flowers. Okay. If, if, I mean, if we have to ask the community group to, to help out as well, I'm happy to make that connection. Great, thank you. And I believe we have an expert gardener on this uh, committee as well. So mm -hmm. any input you might have, Susan? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Um, it would have to be watered or not watered. And I know quite a few little things we could put around it that don't have to be watered. And if all we had was the border that you put around and then we just pick up some of these really local plants that bloom really good in the winter and, and in the spring. And then I've discovered there's such a few months that um, plants, if they're not watered, they're pretty much go underground. But for quite a lot of the year, you can have it blooming and going with no maintenance, which, you know, I don't think there's a maintenance line in there yet for gardens in the, I mean, there's, I just don't know how that's all set up, but the easiest yeah. way to do it is to start by putting a border. Um, and so when it gets installed, if somebody put a border in there, then I would be very able to um, kind of next meeting, figure out what to put in there and, and propose a few things because I always like to just start with something easy uh, and then as, as the, you know, maybe Red Bud Park is, gets a lot of this, that, or the other, and we'll just see how, it, if it's convenient to water, then we put different plants. But if it's not convenient, we just sort of make it look good um, without watering. I'm pretty sure there's a plan for it. Okay. So I'll, I'll look into it, but if there isn't, I can come back. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, advise us next meeting. And sure. So if you need some support, we can help out. Yeah, I'm supportive um, in that, certainly. Wonderful. Um, 
uh, another question for the city, uh, the light pole banner project. Um, I, it, so as my understanding is that downtown strategies is designing the first set of banners. Do we have a timeline on that? Because the senior banners are coming down next week, I think. Yeah, I don't know, but I'll find out. Okay. All right. Um, clear Main Street destination project. I haven't heard any updates on that yet. Uh, I don't, have we walked? Have that group walked an area yet? Yeah. Are you talking? Can I ask you on that Main Street uh, destination? What are you referring to there? I, as a chamber project, I was hoping to do um, a uh, a map again uh, with um, a lot of uh, of the events and their calendar events posted and a number of things. But are you talking just uh, Main Street, like a walking map, or what are you referring to? No, this is something very different, uh, Joan. This uh, is partnering with uh, the Art Council um, to create like a, an art destination somewhere on Main Street. Um, so like an art installation that, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's been finalized yet, but basically taking a block of, of Lakeshore Drive and, and applying a, a, a significant art investment to it. Oh, that's um, where I offered to put something in that front building of mine. Yeah, okay. I could. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't remember from one meeting to the next. No, and, and and what you're talking about is a completely different project. That oh, okay. is is putting uh, art in different storefront windows. So okay. There, okay. There, there's a lot moving. I think right now for this, it's still in the planning stages. So I don't think we have an action item, although I do want to be on that walk when it does happen. Okay. So one of the things that the, the Clear Lake is, we've been approached with, with the poetry boxes I see, is the city, um, because we are in a city building, I was going to propose today that we put a, po a poetry box here in Highlands Park. Now, would that be the city doing it or would the chamber be doing that? So, according, so um, Georgina, the poet laureate of Lake County, she's the one leading this program. When I last talked to her, she said that one was already going into the chamber. Um, well, I, I just told them that I'd like to have one there, but I didn't know how we were going to, if the, this was something the city would put in or we would put in. I, I think you'd have to coordinate with Georgina on that. I think uh, I think that's between her and the chamber. I kind of got the feeling that, that they were the ones that provided the boxes. Yeah. It was it was simply the location, the locations was... That's my understanding as well, is that Georgina is, is producing the boxes and then will likely install as well. Yeah. But um, she's the one to coordinate on that. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so Joyce had the lead in the storefront beautification project. We'll, we'll, we'll put that on hold for now, unless you come back online, Joyce. All right. Um, so that is it for beautification for now. I, 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 and breezing through these because we have a couple of events that we want to talk about in depth. Um, so is there any other beautification projects that we want to add or make a comment about here? I just wanted to add that we did meet at um, at the park with uh, the, the Lake County Rural Arts Initiative uh, group of Violet and Martha. And um, we're moving forward with putting a contract together for Violet to be a project manager and develop some ideas for our, the art installation that we were talking about. Okay, so that walk already happened. Well, we, it was a walk to the gazebo. We didn't Ooh, walk fancy. the area, but we did get outside. Um, so the, the, real, the real meat and potatoes, if you will, of the project has not begun yet. Um, but Violet has agreed to be the project manager and we'll, we'll be working with her moving forward to figure out where the best areas are and, and how to best, um, you know, what we want, basically. Yeah. I, I would still, I'd love to be in that process, even if it's just an observer. I know she's running, but okay. as awareness happens, just okay. keep me in the loop. Cool. All right, any other comments or questions about beautification? <laughs> All right, folks, let's dive into the, the events. All right, 
uh, Tina, Soapbox Derby. You, I know you have a lot to update us on. So we've started meeting, we formed a committee. We started meeting regarding the uh, Soapbox Derby. I know it's a couple of months away. However, we are revisiting what worked, what didn't work, what could be made better and how we can expand it into, you know, getting more interaction than we did the first year. Um, we have changed the um, starting point for the adults. They're gonna go up all the way to the top, so that should be fun. Um, we have decided to do some sort of a workshop. Um, and we are nailing down the details of that and we should be starting to advertise for that. And we decided also to use the same rules and car spec specs as the first year. Um, and then I could start advertising that. I emailed vendor applications and sponsorship applications to you for downtown Clear Lake. Mm -hmm. And then, so I should be able to send the rules to you as well. Um, we yeah, do. The rules haven't changed though, right? No. Same. Then it's, it's we just there. have to change the dates and stuff in it. Okay. Um, and then something that's kind of really could be exciting is um, Willie Cepeda from our fire department has challenged other agencies to uh, build cars as well. So we could have some, a lot of law enforcement and um, like fire department participation as well from other agencies. So that could be very exciting. I love it. Yeah. Can we get um, Chief Cepeda to do a video to challenge folks? Possibly. You know, I'm, just, I'm sure he. Just like a wrestler promo video. You know? I wonder if we could get, you know, maybe Chief Cepeda and maybe Chief White or someone mm -hmm. to do that. Video. You're looking to do a video for to advertise the um, Derby? So we have footage from two years ago um, that we can turn into a social media video, um, but um, Chief Cepeda is challenging other public agencies to put cars together. So I'm thinking we can do, I don't know if you guys have ever watched like WWF wrestling, but like something where he goes on video and actually calls out different agencies and talks about how slow they are. That would be fun. Oh. Yeah. That'd be super. You have someone who does this on. work? The videos, the, mu the music and video work. Do you have someone who does that? Uh, we can leverage Peg. Um, I can also do it. Uh, do you have Do you have video background? Well, my daughter is going to AAU, which she does music and videos right now. So she's moving in with me in green. And so she'll be available for that kind of work. Let, but let's do it. Um, it let, let's... Um, well, do you and I connect? We'll have her her shoot it, and I can work with Tina to do that. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Okay, awesome. Okay, I've also gotten um, one confirmed uh, sponsorship um, from one local business. Uh, another one told me today he was sponsoring um, a, a good amount, um, and he was also a sponsor from last year. Um, we have also created a new level of sponsorships to hope to get some sponsors for, uh, to sponsor just a vehicle, um, which would help at the workshop and help uh, build up to, I think we decided on 10 cars, put a cap on it um, nice. to do uh, for people who want to participate, but maybe don't have the resources to do that. People are, are children. <laughs> So these would be loaner cars. You cannot get a free car. I know, right? Uh, oh, that's why I was <laughs> hoping. <laughs> um, no, they they not loaner cars, but um, no, these are actual. They, cars. they would be they're their cars. Them well, paint them and make them their own. Oh, so so they're not going to be just available that day. No, they're the, building them. They're building, they're building it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we have some buy-in to help put them together. Um, from a couple of the people on the PD side and then myself and then a, one or two of the public works people um, would help monitor. Love it. Everyone seems so excited about this. I'm, I'm I know, I know. Fired up. All right, so Susan, let's, I'll start an email chain with Yumi and Tina and okay. we'll figure out the Chief Cepeda throwdown video. 
Um, and then. Yeah, so, we'll pre present it to my daughter and she can see if she can pull that off for you. I bet she can. She's got all that yeah. recording equipment and stuff. Um, when it comes to, and if she needs equipment too, we can leverage Peg. Peg has some good equipment as well. So she has gaps, we can do that. Um, do you, so last year we put a minimum spend into advertising. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to do that again this year? Do you want me to put together some video ads? I think those helped to a, a certain so, extent. Those helped um, if we can get them out a little bit early. Well, maybe one earlier and you know how to do it. Like, um, mm -hmm. Um, maybe not so last minute this time. Okay. Um, maybe that's what I'm saying. Uh, that would help. And I don't think we spent a whole lot of money on that. Um, so I, I think I spent 700 on it. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's still not a whole lot of money. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if we have sponsors this year and, you know, we, we can put minimum amounts to it. It was just really good at breaking silos, right? Yes. So yes. the folks who follow the chamber, the folks who follow the city of downtown Clear Lake, they saw it, but the folks who didn't found out after. So, yeah. So yeah. what I'll do is I'll put together two videos. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll put together two ads, and then we can discuss how yeah. we want to use it. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. Any other comments about the soapbox derby? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move to the 4th of July. So I invited, um, again, uh, some members of the Lions to come in and talk about their portion of the event. Um, unfortunately, no one could make it. Um, so I have to answer some of those questions John. for you, I hope. Well, I, I don't even know if we're at the point of asking questions. It's more, what do you guys need to be successful? Is there anything that this group can help you with? Um, I, um, as far as I know, uh, the Lions Club is handling everything right now through um, Tatanka um, and through Ray Bridges. Ray is coordinating the parade itself, which will start line up at 10 o'clock at uh, Redbud Park. And what they would probably need is to make sure that the um, police volunteer have uh, the barricades up properly and street blocked. Because I will tell you, that's always been an issue in the past is uh, people cutting around and going down Lakeshore Drive and they don't seem to realize that there are, especially kids walking down the street trying to get in, the, in a good position. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. if that would be one thing I would suggest is that the barricades, to, to coordinate the barricades with Ray Bridges. Um, and that uh, we're well aware of uh, needing to have the, those uh, the road barricades put up when we could. Um, the um, the Lions Club uh, is having all the vendors. I understand have to be on the street instead of the grass. Um, they did tell me that the chamber uh, worm race was was on the grass. So there was some misunderstanding from. What the information I was getting and what I've been sending to vendors even is um, the city's requirements that nothing can be on the grass or are the non pro I, I really didn't quite understand and I don't think um, from what I'm gathering they are not quite sure other than the food trucks and all the profitable items have to be on the street and that um, some of the nonprofits were could be in the grass area. So if we can get a clarification on that because, for example, the chamber, the worm races, we need to be in a very sh as much shaded area as possible, or those poor night crawlers aren't going to make it. Uh, so just to tell you about that. Um, I, I can. Uh, sorry, the other thing, I, there was some, there was some concern talking to uh, to Tonka uh, regarding the the end. They. Um, our vendor booths usually are starting to wrap up at four o'clock. However, the concert starts at five and there was concern <coughs> that they might not be able to get everybody out of there properly by the time the concert starts. So there was some confusion there and I would definitely have somebody check with um, Bunny at Tatanka on that uh, to verify that um, who can stay longer, can because she was wondering if the Lions Club could still serve alcohol on the street at five o'clock, so, that type John, of thing. 
John, I'm just gonna interrupt you real quick. We did yeah. meet with um, Bunny and Robert this week. We answered a lot of their questions, I think, and got everything settled. As far as your question on the worm races and the location of that, internally here at the city, we don't um, dictate where the lions are going to put what vendors where, except for the food vendors. We did ask them to put them at the, the southern end of the road blockade. We did say that no vendors could be in the park this year because we are setting up for the concert and there ha we have to meet according to our signed contractual obligations to the concert providers. We need to meet certain obligations. So we did say nobody is setting up in the park. However, if you need a shaded area for the worm races, we can allow for that. that that's fine. And I think traditionally you've done it on the side of the bathroom the, the bathroom mm -hmm. over in that correct that corner which i don't think is part of where we need no to no so if you need to do the worm races over there that's absolutely totally fine um yesterday bunny and robert did say that no they were cutting off um the alcohol uh, serving at five o'clock yesterday and they no longer wanted to provide alcohol in the evening um so that was where we ended there um, the, all the vendors are going to be on Lakeshore between Austin and Olympic. The food vendors are closer to Austin because when the band is sound checking and getting set up, we need, we don't, we want to make the, the, any generators and stuff kind of a little bit less noisy. Um, the vendors that want to stay till after the concert are more than welcome to. We just don't want vehicles and stuff pulling in behind there while we're trying to have a concert. That starts at six. Correct. Not, not five. five. So I think vendors have until like what, five o'clock to, over. I'm not sure what you Well, do. if they're, if they want to stay till the concert is over and keep selling their, their, their items, that's totally fine. So they either need to be out by five or they can stay after one or the other. Um, and then the only other thing that would affect, you know, the norm normalcy of the events is at six o'clock, the carnival has been asked to turn their music off um, as to not interfere with the concert. They could still play their ride and, and, and do their business. They just got to turn the music off. I think it's debatable on what music is going to be better, though. Really? <laughs> the carnival music versus the world-renowned artist. You're gonna go there, David. <laughs> so who is the who is the entertainment? Tyler. Rich. Tyler Rich. Tyler Rich. So it sounds like, um, in terms of the, the Lions portion, you guys have good communication. Any blockers right now that you know of? No, we had a big meeting yesterday, uh, members of the police department. We had the pyrotechnics, we had um, my, Melissa and I, we had public works, we had Peg TV and um, Chief, Cepeda. Chief Cepeda, and we had uh, Bunny and Robert. Awesome. So I feel like we got everybody together and said, here's what we need from each of you. Are there any concerns or, or blockers? Yep. So right. we want to all be on the same page so everybody's part can go as smooth as possible. Excellent. Um, so it sounds like you guys have that handled. Let's talk about the concert and how you're promoting that right now. Um, well, there is a Facebook event. I created an Eventbrite for not only the, the $100 VIP tickets, um, but as kind of, you know, the, the general mission, which are the free tickets, just as a kind of uh, gauge, I guess, to see how many people potentially are going to come and that would be excited about this. Obviously, we know that there are going to be many more than what we're expecting, way more than what is on the internet. However, um, Tyler Rich now has the City of Clear Lake on his website as a tour date. Okay. So it's possible we, we are getting a lot of out-of-towners who follow him. Um, By Coastal Media sent me their promo ads. I have had them um, reviewed by the tour manager and they have been approved. So by coastal media is doing a media camp, a paid media campaign. Correct. Excellent. That's that was really my big question. Yes. 
Um, are they doing an organic media campaign at all? Like, are they talking to the newspapers? Are they talking to the radio stations? That I don't know. Okay. Um, would you be willing to talk to the newspapers and radio stations? Sure. All right. I might set up a couple of interviews for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> no, I mean, we want to get the, this is, yeah, this yeah. is probably one of the coolest things that has happened in Clear Lake since the soapbox derby. So, um, I think we, we can, this combined with the Lions <laughs> event, I think is Yeah, just no, really it's gonna, incredible. it's, it's, there's so many moving parts, we call them, to this that we needed to, it felt good having everybody in the same room going, this is what each of us need and how do we make it, it all work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well done. I do, I do need volunteers though. What do you need volunteers for? I need like probably four or five to help do the parking. And then probably that, and that's the most part that I need is parking. I, I reached out to the high schools to see if uh, anybody needs community service hours or anything. I have not gotten a firm commitment um, other than my child, of course. Okay. Well, count me in, I'll do parking. For okay, you. cool, thank you. Excellent. Um, so yeah, if you have if you have promotional channels, um, does the chamber need anything to help promote this the the concert part of it? Actually, both. Um, I well, I um, I've actually had people in today asking about the VIP tickets. Until you just mentioned, I didn't know it was going to be through Facebook. Um, if you had a poster, or if you want. Um, myself or my husband to create a poster for the event that we can put up not only in our business but in other businesses uh, i think that would be um, really advantageous um, i do have you in my uh, newsletter um, uh, as far as having some of the information uh, that'll go out to chamber members but people in the public uh, it would be nice I have a lot of people that stop by here, um, even if they don't come in, my window is getting where I can hardly see out with all the posters <laughs> on. I, so, I, do have a, I do have a poster that was created by Bicoastal Media and approved by the tour manager, because we have to have, in advertising, we have to have certain pictures, certain fonts, certain wording. Okay. So, so if I there's a way that I can get either one of those where I can reduce it to flyer size, and have flyers and attach it and email it out to the, the member list we have, as well as uh, put it up in the window here and maybe some of the other businesses will put it up as they have it. I, I do have an approved flyer I can email to you. Yes, please. Yeah, and then if I could get a poster, it would be nice. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joan. Any, any other comments or questions about the concert? Okay, wonderful. Let's move on. Uh, Low Lake Days, this is complete. Um, from all accounts, it was a fantastic event. Photo contest we talked about. Um, Farmer's Market, we can take that offline. Kite Festival. Stephanie, what do you got for us? Well, we did not, to my knowledge, pick a date, so... Um... We were thinking about um, October 16th. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else going on in the county on the 16th, but I mean, there's a, seems like there's always something. There's a fishing tournament the week before, and I think that. So I'm not I'm not opposed to running events during fishing tournaments. I would actually prefer that in some cases because because there's a lot of people coming in. Yep. If That's you're driving by in your boat and you see a hundred kites in Austin Park, you're, you're gonna, gonna take wanna... your family next year. Yeah. Oh, well, that's true. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about stacking events. So do you want to do it the ninth? What does everybody think? I mean, can you pull it off by the night? Or do you want the extra month? No, you mean the extra week? Extra week. I mean, the said, 16th. 
Oh, October 9th. October. I thought you were saying September. Okay. No, no, no. October. Well, so you want the extra week. <laughs> well, to, the, to that point, I think that it could be good advertising. Oh, look, next time. I mean, of course, we, who knows whether there'll be a. Uh, and and then again, if we get the if we get it out, it, uh, you know, if we get it on the web, and 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 people who might be coming might bring their family, and while the while dad's fishing, mm -hmm. they could be doing the kite thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea. All right, we're going tonight. That's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have a date set. Do you want to talk through what you have in mind and anything we can help with? Well, uh, my thinking is that we have a uh, categories, uh, and, and age categories, kind of, kind of like the soapbox derby, where uh, you have maybe a family uh, of an, a certain age group, uh, and then and, and maybe have the adults last. Um, when you say have categories, is it like a decor decoration it, competition or a skills competition? No, I think it, uh, I think in the beginning it should just be a fun fly uh, kite flying thing. I, I did not think about. Of course, I haven't looked. I mean, when you look at this, it looks like they've got everything in the world. Um, I wonder if people can actually decorate and customize kites without it destroying the aerodynamics of it. Like, there's skilled people who can do it, but I'm yeah. wondering if the less skilled like me. Well, and I want you to know that I, I call, I, I got online and I called various places, and of course during the pandemic nobody was answering. Uh, there's a there is a kite store out in Bodega, and I thought, oh, this is great. And it's a, apparently it's a fairly good size one never call me back. Mm -hmm. So I, I will definitely reach out again. Um, and I did tell, who was it? Um, grocery outlet had some kites. Somebody else locally had kites, a lot of them. And I said, you got to have these again. And uh, so I think that if we get a local vendor that's willing, uh, you know, be it Walmart, whoever, to have just basic kites. Mm -hmm. And then I think we could certainly have a, a division for, uh, you know, like box kites and custom kites. And, um, but I just don't know how we want, if we want to start with the first one, kind of just being a fun thing. And we could certainly have prizes. The only thing I, I, thought, I thought about uh, with prizes, uh, just thinking back to like the worm races, I don't know. It, I don't know how many kids would get a kick out of getting a, a prize like that. I, I think they would more like to have, uh, I don't know, money or, or I don't know. So. Okay. So let, let's say it's a, a fun event, folks fly kites. Mm -hmm. There's also a decorative por portion, which I don't think it, that has to be age blocked. I say we just yeah, no. have an open category. Yeah. And if we have a, a huge turnout with that, that's fine. Uh, what about like height skill classes? If we could find, I'm just trying to think, what can we do to, to bulk up this event beyond just folks in the- Well, maybe, event? maybe like the, maybe like the week before. You know, I'm saying right at the event. Or right at the event. Yeah. So like kids come and they can- Kind of learn how to do it. Like early, like, so start that, like maybe at 10, uh, a, a kind of kite learning if you if, and have a booth that says if you if you or an area that says if you have not been able to practice on your kite or you're just getting your kite today please um you know come to the kite learning mm -hmm. we can we can find a, a local kite expert and just you know here are the five tips to flying a kite it has to be windy it has to i don't know what the tips are yeah um cool what what, are, what other uh Things can we attach to this? You think? Well, you know what? Let's think. Think about it a little bit more. Think yeah. about what you want the core to be. What's going to attract people to this, and then we can start filling in the yeah. gaps. Well, I think initially, I think probably getting it on the calendar, maybe getting the word out with a poster or whatever on Facebook, whatever. Just saying, and you know, save the date. 
uh, this is going to be a fun, you know, a fun event, mm -hmm. a first time. Although Joan told me that years ago, there used to be a kite event here. Yes, we had it in Austin Park. Um, we kind of coordinated it with a um, the Easter parade. It was around Easter. Uh, and then we did the kite contest right after. Uh, it was kind of a fun event for the whole thing. The problem I will tell you in April, it was the winds um, the, and kites getting caught in trees. Uh, so I'm hoping when the date you're picking it will not be as bad, but um, springtime can be so unpredictable. Either no wind yeah. or wind. Um, and we only, I think we did it in one or two years and it was, I have a lot of pictures um, if you're interested. Um, Joan, you, you, you send me a couple of those pictures because I'll take the lead on creating a poster for it. Yeah, let um, me find my kite pictures. <laughs> You'd be and, surprised. And then, You'll probably recognize some of the, uh, the young oh, sorry, people. Now adults, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. This is good. This is, good. is this going to be at Austin Park? The kite festival? Well, I said Austin Park or Thompson Harbor. Because if, if you think of it, but then it, no, it won't be at Thompson Harbor it, that, that because of the fishing tournament, tournament. If we didn't have a fishing tournament, it would seem that it could be at either place or think, at both places. Yeah. Is there the anywhere, other. like, is oh, the school yeah. have a, a place where, like, the experts could go up on a rooftop and fly their kites on the rooftop? Like, just the experts. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I don't know if experts would want to do that, but if they do want to do that, we can talk with Becky and. Well, it keeps you out of the trees. It gets you higher than trees, and um, you get a whole lot more action. You can really move. I don't know if, for insurance purposes, if that would be that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a liability. Some accident flying. Looking for yeah. place Some flying right off. Um, <laughs> there is. There is the field behind the school, though, if we wanted to you have can, like yeah, the I was just going to suggest that. Is you soccer field at um, right across from Burns Valley, uh, maybe use Burns Valley. You're going to have because what we found is you're going to have different competitions. You're going to have actually commercial. If this goes over like you're hoping, you're going to have commercial kite flyers that have very competitive high speed kites yeah and then you're going to have children in their little kites you do not want them flying in the same location um right that was one of right. the situations i think we had the second year uh with the commercial flyers that came in and the little kids kind of got run out and the whole thing was for the little kids that's how we were trying to do it but well and i think i think joan that that's why we would have different time divisions so in other words, X, X group, eight to 10 year olds would go at from 10 to 11. And, right. Or, but you or, still might want different locations because I'll tell you why. The, and then you have those that fly the really large, big kites. It, it takes them a long time to get those up in the air. They yeah. can't bring them down right away. Right. So mm -hmm. you might want to have some of the more decorative high flying kites at Austin Park on the lake. You might have the kids set up on the soccer field where there are no trees mm -hmm. and you're racing yeah. kites right in the park itself where they know how to get around the trees. And then maybe, um, so if you had some um, on the lakeside in uh, not over by the, just right on the lakeside where you're putting the promenade and then have some across the street in the park, and then the other would be in the soccer field, and have them um, all going at the same time because they're they're going to be flying at different levels, different speeds, and it would really make if if you do it by time, like I said, some of these kites takes a long time to get them up in the air, and they're not going to be able to bring them down right away. It, it's interesting. Um, Bodega Bay's Kite Festival, I, I seem to think is this summer, if they're going to do it, it would be actually worth going to watch their Kite Festival mm -hmm. um, and to see how it works. Um, and I'm not sure exactly the date of theirs. 
Sounds good. Uh, so uh, if you're uh, looking at, if you can see the trees in the park, that's what I'm saying. The kids know would be better in the soccer fields. And then the, um, the uh, have your advanced or your adults in Austin Park and then your artistic uh, speed uh, and the huge ones in the, um, on the lake side. So on the beach side, uh, yeah. actually. Yes. Because I don't know if you've ever seen these. Um, we've gone, my son, when he was little, really got into the kites and we've gone to some of these kite festivals and some of these guys, it'll take them a half hour or more to get the kite up. Mm -hmm. And they are up <laughs> unbelievably high. Uh, and you also want to make sure that you um, don't have a lot of drone flyers up at the same time, I would imagine. <laughs> Just an FYI. Oh, I bring a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it sounds like you have uh, direction to move forward, Stephanie, um, if you need a, a hand or have any other questions <clears throat> at your service. Okay, great. Uh, but good insight, Joan, and definitely lean on Joan as well. She seems like. She knows her kite stuff. Beautiful. Any other, I think that's all I had as events I wanted to talk about. Uh, we have some other fall events that are in motion. Do we have a state of the city date? Yes. So it would be 13th. October or September? October, which is a Wednesday, the Wednesday before we meet. All right, wonderful. Um, I thought that we had talked about, and it was one of the, I thought it was one of the weekends. Oh, you said September, not October, right? September? I'm sorry, what? For what? The state of the city. September. No, October. It is October. Didn't I put it on the calendar? Yeah. Um, we had talked about, I thought, it uh, 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 was supposed to have been last year, an, an anniversary dinner, a whole weekend. And, and I thought that we had talked about we were going to do it this year, just make it smaller. Is that not at, that's that? Yeah, we haven't had those discussions ah. at this point. We've okay. been really focused on this concert. Gotcha. So and the soapbox derby, so. Okay. Okay, um, I don't see any other action items here for folks who are in attendance. Um, any other comments or questions about events in general? These really sound great. People are really together and doing really interesting, exciting things. I think the city is coming right along. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think we play a really important role in this because it's it's about the experience, whether it's residents or, or tourists, they want to come here on the weekend, they enjoy the lake, but they also want something to do. And if we can start populating the weekends, I think that's that's one of the most valuable things that this committee can provide moving forward. Yeah, the, the Bruno on the line, he wishes to speak. Oh, sorry, we passed that portion. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead, Bruno. You can add it. Okay. Uh, I sorry I came in late. I was uh, involved in. An you only get three seconds here. <laughs> I, I got I got moved. Sorry, that was my fault. I did that right in the middle of your conversation. It felt, it felt very personal when I wasn't given this uh, this privilege here. <laughs> All right. I was uh, looking at our concert list. I love and appreciate the fact that we're bringing concerts back to the city of Clear Lake. However, uh, not disappointed, but there's only three concerts and there's something like eight or whatever it is. Uh, I just spoke with Alan earlier, uh, who said to coordinate with Tina. I wanna bring back more. Uh, I spoke to a reggae band uh, who plays both in Sonoma County and Lake County. They are absolutely fabulous, very positive. 
really good vibe and there's no way you're not going to want to move when you listen to their music they both they do zydeco uh they do uh like creole type of music from louisiana and caribbean style music uh but they are are an amazing group their name is midnight sun massive uh look them up and um, they are very, very, very affordable for the quality of music that they play. Uh, so I want to work with Tina. I know Tina's working on some local bands uh, to try and see if we can bring some in. Uh, and I'd love to work with Tina on that because I think the more we can get people out on a Saturday to enjoy our park and get together with the community more so than just well, obviously they're there more than just during the concerts, but more than just three concerts in the year, I think the better off we're gonna be again moving into 2022 and, and so on. So I'm, I'm gonna be working with Tina on that. I just wanted to at least mention it. I just think it's important that we make that stage as busy as possible. And that's great. I, I love an opportunity to work with you any given time. So, but with that being said, we did look into having more. There were a couple of concerns that we can go over privately or, or whatever. Um, um, and then, you know, if we do move forward, I do have some bands that have been recommended to me um, from out of town that are willing to come up for relatively nothing. Um, and I can share that information with you too. So if Alan's direction is to move forward with more, let's do it. I just need to get through this first one though. Would, would you be able to succinctly, or unless it's a repeat of what was already discussed earlier, uh, would you be able to succinctly explain what some of the potential issues might be of having more? Well, I, I think the, the, the main issue was the cost of the insurance. If the city were to add, originally, I believe we did look into what, five or eight, yeah. and the insurance was a great deal of money. Um, and I would, so, I would suggest for the low cost that we might be looking at for these specific groups uh, that, and as long as it's good music, right? I mean, that's, that's what it's really all about is something the whole right, family right. could enjoy. Family friendly stuff is what we're looking for. Uh, but like for instance, the group that I just talked to would be $850 to bring the entire band. It's like a 10 member band. Uh, add that to the insurance, that's pretty easy to go out and get some donations to be able to cover all that. When you're talking about the, the bands that have already been selected for the three concerts, you're already paying so much for the band that it doesn't leave maybe enough meat on the bone to be able to pay for the insurance. So uh, I'm willing to work with whatever it is that we need to do to get the funding required to make those things happen uh, and happy to work with you on that. Yeah, absolutely, we can get together. And I think that we need to also learn from the experience from last weekend, um, maybe not last weekend, two weekends ago, that there's just certain types of music that, that we, we need to maybe shy away from and, and not allow, because even though it may not be negative in what the lyrics and the verbal portion of the uh, uh, music is, the tone might sound negative and then we're going to get complaints and that's that's not what we're looking for uh, so i think we need to make sure and filter uh through who it is that wants to come to make sure that we choose the right people for the maximum outcome that we're looking for in building community not just pleasing a specific portion of the community when you're bringing that up just real quick do you have the dates for the other concert yes um august hold on, hold on real quick August 7th, and that one also starts at 6. And then September 11th, yes, because the 4th is the Soapbox Derby, and so it would be the next one um, at 6 o'clock as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then if we do more, Bruno, we can fit them in. Yeah. So that was August 10th and September 11th? August 7th. Seven. And September 11th. Sorry, I was a little bit behind of taking notes. Yeah, Tina, can you, whenever you have other things like that, if you can send the chamber a message, uh, an email on them, or posters or flyers, I'd be glad to not only get them up, but share them with our membership. Absolutely. All right, folks. Um, anything else with any other comments for events? 
All right, let's yeah. move to. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, well, no, it doesn't have anything to do with the events. I just didn't know if Bruno and if they knew about the exercise equipment that's on its way to being put in. Oh, there's a big head nod from Bruno right now. He knows that? Very animated head nod. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rotary. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move to item number four. Item number four, Susan, do you wanna to present? Certainly, certainly. So um, I put uh, some information at the end of the agenda and basically what I am interested in is uh, the climate situation is quite uh, on the table for a lot of people and there's even been protests in, in San Francisco already. And it just seems like, first of all, Clear Lake has a lot of um, amazing natural resources. And so I've been following this natural resources council uh, or department agency in state. And the state has determined that they will pay a lot of money for certain projects. And the projects have to do with um, water recovery and resilience of the community. And so two, one, we have the lake and the rivers, okay? That's our water just in Clear Lake itself. And so I know of a company called Bioengineers and they are located in Laytonville, California. And they have been, um, they go through the river system and they, optimize it for water uh, soil absorption for the water and the health of the river. They've done this for a lot of these Northern California rivers. And if you look at their website, it's B-I-O engineers, um, it's probably .com, but it's in Laytonville. And um, I spoke to uh, Philip Buner of Bioengineers and he's, in, in um, either Middletown or just right over there, right here, he's in the local area. And his section of this bioengineers would be interested in looking at um, being able to optimize the rivers, the creeks that go through Clear Lake. So if we did that, um, so the two things I would wonder about is one, is anybody taking water out of those rivers that should or should not be doing that? And you know, all these questions with what's going on with those rivers would be looked at and a proposal could be made. And then to pay for that proposal, Philip had sent me to the state of California Department of Water Resources and there's something called Urban Streams Funding. And under there, we could request uh, the money, a grant to do this project. So I would like to propose that, okay, first of all, I'm not the city of Clear Lake. So I can't do any of this state of California thing. So the city of Clear Lake would have to ask the state of California for the money. I believe the money's there because of the meetings that I've been going to and the way that the state is addressing climate uh, catastrophe at this time. So they want to focus on this. And the more we ask for, because we have several things going for us. One, we're a natural resource wonder, really, to be perfectly honest. Two, the biodiversity in the south of the lake the part that goes down and the marsh, it's quite extraordinary and everybody knows it. Three, um, water, this is a water, it's quite unusual actual here. There's a lot of water and then there's no water. And then if the creeks are properly cleaned and, and made to operate better, the lake is more rejuvenated. So I think that we have a very, very good chance of, um, obtaining however much money we want to, to optimize our water and our rivers and reduce fire um, by, because river channels are really a good way to stop a fire. So these are all important landscape 
um, operations and in Lake County, I've noticed everything grows up and grows over so fast. And so the more we can maintain our river systems and groundwater infiltration and um, we'll get to urban greening in a whole nother time, but this is a really important um, piece for Clear Lake to begin. And then if there are people who start addressing the, the, these committees and say, look, what are you doing? You know, um, we have projects on the board that are just as important um, to the people of the, the, the city and the state as pretty much anything else. Uh, so that's what I would like to proceed on, but I would need uh, somebody from the city or even the county to propose this to the state. I certainly I don't think that we, I don't think there's any rivers or yeah. creeks that come into the that was my thought as well. So so Susan, has this uh, group that you've spoken with actually assessed the the water situation in Clear Lake? So we have the lake. Oh no, we have all all of our river beds are essentially dry for mm -hmm. most of the year. Um, right. So I don't know if that would fall into this program. And 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 Susan, our water, our, our Clear Lake is the only reason that we have as much water as we have right now is there's a gauge called the Rumsey gauge and Yolo County cannot take our water. That, that's the only reason we have water as much as we do right now. Actually, so there is to any, add to that. What, say that. I'm going to add to it. The reason they can't get our water is the big rock in the middle of the creek. And if that gets removed, <laughs> oh. the Yolo not there by a piece of Rumsey gauge. Mm -hmm. So there is a physical um, issue, a physical barrier, physical barrier, and at one time we had a governor that wanted to uh, bypass through Anderson Park and around that gauge to get the water into the Yolo Basin and out to Southern California. Um, another governor that got elected stopped it. Uh, however, the Corps of Engineers has on a, several occasions been asked to look at how to remove the rock that is underneath the Lower Lake Bridge. Oh. If we have that rock removed, the water would flow again. So yeah. um, okay. I, I will tell you my arguments with this that go back since for many years, and we do not want to touch that rock. I was wondering about that. See, I, that's why I wanted to bring it up to everybody here first, because it's like, you know what? Water is such a sensitive subject. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, a very interesting it. subject. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and and it doesn't seem like that in the dry creek beds is what I'm talking about, the dry creek beds going in. You people, you think it's managed well, and you'd rather not have anybody here. Is that what I'm hearing? We, well, you know, at one time, and, and probably uh, <laughs> Melissa can answer this, at one time, we've had both the creeks, Miller and Burns Valley, cleaned. Yeah, um, that's the thinking. And uh, the biggest problem I can tell you, and you'd have to talk to the people up in Northern Lakeport, they found removing the trees and other things that filter the water are healthy. It's the problem is all the appliances and garbage that get dumped in by mankind. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it might be more that we could work it out ourselves if there's money available where we can clean the man-made hazards that have been applied to the creek versus actually removing debris because anything that can filter the water before it goes to the lake so of extra nutrients are, are valuable for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I wanted to bring it up because I'm sure that I knew everybody would have, or diff, people knew the different history and people knew quite a lot of things. So let's just, I, I wanna suggest things and I wanna hear from people what's going on. And I certainly don't wanna push anything that wouldn't be appropriate. So am I hearing that this is not an appropriate thing that people are really would rather not have the state of California involved in this particular <laughs> situation? which is perfectly fine with me. Oh, that was just, just, just to let you know, the state of California is already highly involved in the lake. 
uh, it's involved right now in the Middle Creek Restoration Project north of the lake. We have $15 million that we're spending to enhance the quality of the lake. I was just, that's why I was late to this meeting, actually. I was meeting with some tribal councils to discuss that. Uh, so the state is already deeply embedded in what's happening with our lake. Uh, nothing is going to change as far as the dam uh, or anything like that. There's uh, two decrees by court that have been settled and agreed upon of when the dam can open and when the dam can close. Um, and there, there would literally be close to no such thing as Clear Lake if that dam was wide open all the time. And so, I, in fact, I think it's healthy for us to have that dam there. Uh, even though it, certain environmentalists might say a dam is no good, but it's it's it keeps our water full, it keeps our lake full, and the fact that we're uh, relying on that for drinking water and other things, uh, we need it to be full. And so uh, while we're in a drought, the lake is still really full, even though it's low for the lake standards. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like we're seeing islands pop up like Mendocino Lake or other lakes around the uh, Northern California. So uh, they're definitely involved. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you for everybody's input. Um, I'm certainly listening. Excellent. I don't think there's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Any, other, kind of <laughs> Any other comments or questions on this? All right, folks. Um, right here, we're not going to go forward. And I'm just going to clarify that, that I'm not going to proceed on this at any, on any level. Um, I, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a path forward, but I'll oh, go ahead. Okay. Bruno. No, do, I do, just do you mind if, I, do you mind if I offer a suggestion? Yeah. Because jo Joan brought up what the big problem is and it, it's the, the litter that ends up in our waterways, which eventually ends up in our lake. Uh, right. it's, and so it blocks the flow, it, it deteriorates the entire area. It's not, it's blight basically in a natural area. Uh, I would say that um, water resources from time to time has what's called a coastal cleanup. I think it's a na nationwide program and wow. water resources gets funding from the state or the feds. I forget exactly where it comes from, but once a year and somebody correct me, I think it's around September-ish, uh, that they do a creek and shoreline cleanup. And that might be something that uh, we can engage in and get more people in the city of Clear Lake to engage in, in order to clean up our habitat, because it's important to us. We, we, we love our lake and the water doesn't just fall directly into the lake. It comes from our creeks, it comes from other areas. And so cleaning up uh, those waterways during a legitimate cleanup uh, program, I think would be a really good thing to do. Wonderful. Bruno, yeah. Bruno, they're having one on the 19th of this month. Oh, that was, I was way Redbud, off. Yeah, at Redbud Park. Yeah, I was just going to say, I thought I heard there was one. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, uh, city, yeah, do you have a report at all? We covered a lot. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have anything more to add. I think we've covered everything pretty well. All right. Uh, any members have uh, anything to add or any reports? And hearing none. Uh, if you're, if you're not, if, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You're not even looking, David. <laughs> I'm not. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the city for putting up that fish and working with Diego Harris. I know that there's three more coming. Hopefully we can put up one at a time uh, soon, sooner than later. I know one will be put on the Austin Beach side. Uh, I am waiting to sit down with Alan to figure out where we're going to put our picture frame now that the uh, boardwalk is getting close to completed. Uh, as we had discussed, we're going to put a picture frame with a GPS coordination and a hashtag best view of Kanakdai, whatever. Basically, the, don't go to Lakeport for the other view, stay here. Um, but uh, <laughs> working on getting that with Alan, getting with Alan so we can figure out where that is so we can get that put up before the end of summer as well. Bruno, uh, can I ask you one other thing? So at the beginning of this meeting when you were here, people discussed putting a um, circle around your fish and planting around there, maybe some um, hardy, uh, plants that are not water necessary, like they can be watered without uh, a gardener. 
um, would do you did you know about that, or was that something that you would be interested in having? Well, done? Two, two things. Uh, it's not my fish. Uh, there's a lot of people that put a lot of work into it. All I did was think of an idea and, and people made it happen. Um, and so I think it, it needs to be done the way the city thinks would be best. And if it needs to come through this committee for what would be best to protect it, to uh, make it more attractive, I'm all for it. I don't, I don't have any possession or ownership of that. I just love that it's there. Great, great. I'll make a couple of suggestions around them and then um, people can see if they want to execute. Excellent. Thank you for, for your fish, Bruno. All right, moving on. All right, so any, any, uh, any final member reports? The only thing I want to add is let's, I mean, this is going to be an important few weeks Anyone you talk to, anywhere you can post on social media, let's hype up the 4th of July stuff. Uh, the concert, the events, this is one of the corners, this has long been one of the cornerstone events for the city of Clear Lake and it's just getting better and better uh, thanks to all the hard work. Um, so so be, be a positive advocate for the city and, and get the word out. Okay, uh, David, I have one for you. Okay, go ahead. Oh, Bruno sent you there. It's the 54th annual International Worm Races. So I have a challenge. I have Becky uh, with Canocti Unified challenging Brock to a team race. And I want the city of Clear Lake to maybe challenge the supervisors or maybe challenge the city of Lakeport, but I need someone to spearhead that. Um, and I want the, like the police department to fight against maybe either Brian Martin or against the fire department. Time is short, so I'm hoping you guys can jump in and help this because it's, uh, I think it would be fun and just add to the events going down at the park, but more so to honor some of the past people that started these worm races clear back 54 years ago. Um, and so I, I'm having a special trophy made up that will be transferable from year to year. So this keeps going. And I would like you guys to challenge each other. Are we allowed to import worms? Uh, no, from no, no, no. You have to use my worms. Worm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, you have to use my worms. Okay. <laughs> now, seriously, Joan, I thought in years past that you could bring your own worm if you wanted, or you could, um, at one point, I think we used to pay like 50 cents or whatever, if you bought them from the chamber. No, no, no. no. We, 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 we're we going to just stay, we have to keep these worms nice and healthy and fresh and that All way right. I have control of them, or you guys have control of them. I'm going to be selling adult snow cones for lionesses. <laughs> you can't touch the worms and do snow cones at the same no, time. No, I can't. <laughs> yeah, my worms would get a little intoxicated with the margarita juice. <laughs> might, might make them faster. <laughs> yeah, might. <laughs> so, Bruno, are you going to build a derby car this year? I haven't begun. I think you need to beat Alan this year. Yeah. But he is he starting from scratch or is he using the winning car? I think he's using the winning car. I thought he was I don't know. I I'll, I'll, I'll look scratch. into it. What when is it? September sixth? The fourth of September. The fourth. And then you missed the kite you, you, you know when the kite flying contest is? I I'm sure I will recognize it when I see kites flying. <laughs> no, you need to challenge. You need to challenge like Moke or one of your other supervisors to um, see who can fly the highest kite. Or I, I'd be happy to take part both in the worm races and in the kite flying event. I will be at all of the above. Uh, in fact, uh, I was honored with an invite from the uh, Lions Club to be the grand marshal for the parade this year. So. Um, I will definitely be in the area when the worm races are occurring. If you're not signing autographs, that is, right? <laughs> the more you sign, the less value they have. 
<laughs> well, excellent. Well, thank you everyone for your hard work. This, uh, you know, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. We're, we're, we're a lot of movement, a lot of great things happening. So thank you all. Uh, and I adjourn. David, get a hold of me for uh, the uh, worm races. Will do. Maybe I'll show up Tuesday and just uh, throw a, a three minute promo at you during public comment. There, there you go. There, it'd be better than some of the other public comment we're getting. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Bye.